Ooh, hello, folks. Welcome to another wrestling show featuring the one, the only Hobo Tom. It's going to be a very busy hobo for whatever reason. So let's see here. Did that? Did that? Doing this. You need to do that. Tomorrow's going to be pretty busy. Let's talk about some SmackDown. Wow, this was a fun show. And you know what? I didn't realize how good Raw was until I watched my own show and saw my own reviews. Minus one or two matches, Raw was fun. I'll tell you what, this was a solid SmackDown, though. It's hard to complain. Let's get things started. And, and, and I actually looked at my Gmail. I have a whole bunch of copyright stuff, and it told me that I did some live streaming. Live streaming is good. So again, every Friday you can see this guy, for the most part, this eye. This guy on Friday nights do my Impact live stream, my Red Wine Pizza Friday. Oh, what am I going to do during Lent? Shoot. I'll figure out something. That's not for, that's not till next year anyway, so what am I worried about? Impact might not be around us. If you listen to all the internet wrestling rumors. So, let's see here. And that, by the way, is just pure interjection and, and nonsense. So, wait a second. This is not an Impact show. This is a WWE show. So, therefore, it's time to talk about some SmackDown. So, it starts off the show. Kevin Owens. K-O-K-O-K. -O -K -O -K. Well, he should be a member of the one, the only. Bullet Club. For life. Uh, he, he comes in, does the promo. Says he's entering himself to the King of the Ring. King Kevin Owens. Well, wait a second. That does sound like it makes sense. That was a good ring to it, too. Wow. Um, but instead, Shane comes out and says, you're fine. $100,000 for putting your hands on Elias. But in that instance, he was acting as an official. So we'll see what happens with that. Oh, wow. I forgot how early it was. Also, you see, you show you late, you show you sleepy. Um, so Kevin Owens just starts to abuse the office. Well, might as well add five more to that. Smashes a TV, complains, appeals, does whatever you're supposed to do, I guess. I just normally say double blank you, blank and ship you. And then just quit. So the first match starts off is uh, Charlotte versus Charlotte Flair. Woo! That crowd likes the woo, woo, and versus Ember Moon. This is a weird match because for the first part of the match, Charlotte seems out of it. She's been tranquiloing, and I don't know, just like headlock mania. I think at one time someone actually, I think they actually started to chant a little bit. I think they started to chant WrestleMania. Um, Amber Moon's amazing at rope running. She, she does the crisscross thing eventually. That's awesome looking. It's always fun. At some moments, it just seems that Charlotte's going into business for herself because she's just that botchy. Amber Moon launched herself off of the... Top rope to the outside. That got Charlotte Fair's attention. Because that was kind of the, the turning turning point. Because Charlotte said, oh, I actually have to perform. I have to do stuff. I mean, she's still... She just got botchy really quick. She's... It looks like she's... I hate to say it, but she's almost phoned it in, it looks like. She's like, yeah, I can wrestle in my sleep. That's the way she wrestles in my sleep. It's actually a lot better than, than probably I could do awake. But still, like, knowing Charlotte Flair is normally up here, her father was up here. She has all the talent from, like, Arn and Ole Anderson to draw from. I'm sure if she wanted to go speak to Tully Blanchard for advice on what to do, a member of the Four Horsemen, she could probably do that. It's just like, she's, like, half with it. Um, eventually she does get, she does get with it. Uh, goes, starts to work over Ember Moon's knees. Ember Moon is wearing much more provocative ring gear. 
Only because I swear that part of her bottoms were mesh, and and you could see booty, like actual booty, like the crack that separates. I guess they can say that. Indeed. Um, eventually, Charlotte does look on the the figure eight. This was actually a good match. I'll tell you what, but Charles just just has that blank, tranquilo look. Ever since, oh wow, ever since she did start to see Andrade, it's been a different Charlotte. Wow, I thought of that too. That's that's not, that seems weird. I wonder what others think about that. That'd be interesting. Again, if you want to post what you say, you can always send me a comment or shoot me an email. Shoot me a shoot email. Or shoot me a work email. Whatever. But back to this match. The, the second half was much better. I couldn't get over the, the botchiness and the check outness of Charlotte. But still, it's a good cheeseburger match. And there was a Roman Reign in, uh, recap. Uh, Rowan and Daniel Bryan were back there. Like we didn't say anything. And then, then, then whoa. Al Alistair Black's looking for a fight. Knock on my door. Just knock on my door. I have to purge sins and mainly my own. And I do that by fighting. Somewhat, that's the whole gist of it for the most part. He just wants someone to knock on his door and pick a fight with him. Uh, then we have Buddy Murphy versus Roman Reigns. I'll tell you what. This was an amazing match. And, and I probably rated this way too high. But I'll tell you what. This is really good though. Um, Buddy Murphy is obviously fighting above his weight class, and Corey Graves does a great job of building up Buddy Murphy in this match. The fact that, yeah, a lot of people haven't seen what he does, but these are his accolades. This is this is what he's done. And it's like, if you haven't seen Buddy Murphy, you're like, oh, may, maybe he is a, a worthy opponent for Roman Reigns. I'll tell you what, he was doing knees. Oh, those knees look good, too. Roman Reigns was selling the knees. Um... Buddy Murphy obviously was stung the strength of Roman Reigns by, by letting himself get tossed all over the place. At one point, like Roman Reigns like like tossed him way over the announce table on the outside. And you're like, cool. Oh, he didn't even lay on the announce table. He, he cleared the announce table. Amazing. Um again, Buddy Murphy, he's getting tossed with one more spark. He held his own against Roman Reigns. I guess a lot of knee strikes, classic wrestling. A Roman Reigns kicked out out of a dirty pin and a brain buster. And then to Buddy Murphy's credit, he actually picked out of a couple Superman punches. So it's really good, really even. I mean, this was an amazing match. I don't think Roman Reigns has been in this good of a match. I want to say since he took on AJ Styles. And, and gee, that was... I want to say about a year ago. I might be off by a few months. But again, you out there in the YouTube universe can check out Roman Reigns versus AJ Styles. That was probably the last best match Roman Reigns had. I'll tell you what, though. This was up there. I was shocked the crowd was excited. I mean, the crowd's excited. I'm excited. The announcers built things up. I actually upgraded this. This is a filet mignon match. Ooh. Uh, that was just amazing. Then let's see here. That was just kind of review. Oh, I know. Hi, Lucy. I don't know if you can see, but hi. I don't know. I always like to say hi whenever I see those signs. I say hi, Lucy, or hi, whoever. So I'm going to say hi, Lucy. And then just kind of review of stuff. And Clash of Champions is the next pay-per-view. That's coming in September. 
I thought that was in October. So November's typically Survivor Series. So I'll have to look that up. Uh, then the revival. Oh, they're so smooth on their promo. Yeah, yeah they said it a little bit, but it just seemed real. Like they were answering questions right there on the spot. And that make <laughs> it made sense. I, the revival's, geez, they're freaking amazing. And how they're not pushed to the moon and back is, is beyond me. Then Kofi Kingston, New Day, uh, they do a promo on the mic. Yeah. Promo. Yeah. Yeah, the New Day's on the mic. And I think Big E, like, taped his nipples up. Because there was, like, square, shiny black stuff. Who knows, though? Could have been double sided taped black stuff. I have no idea. And then we had Samoa Joe versus Kevin Owens, just like we were promised. Because. Earlier in the show, Shane McMahon said, you know what, well, you, you, Kevin Owens, you're going to have a match. Samoa Joe walked right in and said, said I want to fight Kevin Owens for running his mouth. He does change job for him. Um, the thing is that there was a uh, special guest enforcer. Listen, if you're going to be a special guest enforcer, you have to take a hint from Michael P.S. Hayes. You have to be shirtless and wear jeans and cowboy boots. In harkening back to the days of the Freebird, long, long time ago. This was a fun match, though. Uh, for the most part, the first half, again, tail two matches. One was just a brawl. Kevin fights Joe, and, and Joe fights Kevin. Very simple brawl, very easy. Then we finally got a wrestling match of the first. Uh, fly, Kevin, fly! Because he did his senton from the ring apron. Amazing. Um, he did the senton on. He did the senton twice. That was pretty cool. Um, Elias, actually, Elias, he didn't, he didn't get it first because Elias got in the way. But he did hit the senton from the top rope onto a prone Samoa Joe. Uh, it was a good match. Uh, Joe, eventually, Kevin goes for the pop-up powerbomb, which is impressive in and of itself. Joe does his typical striking, but with a pop-up powerbomb, Joe goes up. And Joe goes down. But then the special guest enforcer pulled the pulled said referee out of the ring. Goes, yes, the quick pin. Samoa Joe wins. Samoa Joe's he he has the wins when wins don't matter, and when they actually do matter, like when he's holding a title, he loses. Confusing sometimes. It was a clean win, but a wonky win. So we'll see where this goes. Again, this is a this was a fun match though. This is a good cheeseburger match. Then Buddy Murphy. Poor Buddy Murphy. He has to find his own locker room because he's in the loser locker room. Like he's just there, like a towel on his shoulder, just kind of leaning back, saying, "I just got, I just got beat up." And then Daniel, Bryan, and Roan come in. <laughs> they force him to say, you're fickle now. Uh, they force him to say that he lies. And you can almost tell Buddy Murphy was <laughs> biting his lip when Daniel Bryan got his face because he looked like he was going to bust out laughing if he didn't bite his lips together. I'll tell you what, wrestlers do to do those weird things to each other. We're going to see if you have the chops you need, Mr. Murphy. Daniel O'Brien's with his whole fuzzy beard is going to get in your face, and you cannot laugh. <laughs> you know you wanted to. You just had that look like... Mm. He was trying so hard. He was already to burst out laughing. Because you know, they'll probably, they probably get along. They'll probably like share stories and stuff. Like in catering. I'm sure Daniel O'Brien has a share of stories. I don't know if Buddy Murphy... Buddy Murphy had to have wrestled in Australia. I don't think he ever wrestled a bear. <laughs> like Dirty Dick Murdoch did. But I mean, I want to doubt if he's heard some stories about kangaroos getting in rings. 
You never know. Uh, so then he, uh, he gets beat up for his efforts. Then he says, oh, I lied. And, and Daniel Bryan just said, Fickle! 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 And then it was a New Day promo. Uh, Randy Orton interrupts. And then we have Holla, Holla, Holla player! We have a triple, we have a six man tags. A trios match between all the New Day and the Revival and Randy Orton. Uh, Kofi. He did that standing monkey flip. That was fun. That was good looking. Um, the Revival. Oh, they're just amazing tag team workers. The work they do with the tags, the classic. There, you always get that one last shot in, or you, or you, or you set up, or you set up the person like it used to be classically. You put your foot on the tough rope, and you ram the guy's uh, head into your foot. They did it differently. They did it from the knees. I like that. I like innovation, but they're still keeping a very classic sense of how to tag team wrestle. So that's really good. Uh, Woof Woods gets bounced off the table. He went up on the outside. Got bounced off the table. Ooh. Poor Woods. Who's that? Oh, yeah. Then Dawson starts to mock Woods. Clap for me. Clap for me. Oh, I have to write that down as a title. That's a good title. I was inspired. Clap for me. Me King K O You are Fickle There we go. That probably that's that probably does summarize summarize a whole bunch of So that's a good title. That's a very good title. I like that title. It's a very good title. Where did I hear that song before? I look, yeah, I'll, I'll think of it later. Uh, Big E eventually does make the hot tag. Starts to clean the house. Then all of a sudden, the shatter machine got hit on Xavier Woods. The revival actually pick up the win. One, two, three. Randy Orton then just comes in the ring and starts to RKO everyone. Everyone needs an RKO. I think, and actually, um, Kofi Kingston ate two RKOs. So he ate one. Right after the pin, and then it was those so Kofi Woods Biggie after being helped up by the revival, and then back to Kofi for another RKO. Like, Stop it, Randy, please. Uh, then there's a face off between Daniel Bryan Rowan and Roman Reigns. Daniel Bryan <laughs> demands an apology. Well, I didn't realize he was that much shorter than Roman Reigns. Daniel Bryan, if you ever walked, if you ever saw him in a mall, unless he had a Daniel Bryan shirt on, you know, even if he did have a Daniel Bryan shirt on, with his lovely wife, Brie Bella, on his arm, carrying his baby, you'd have no idea who Daniel Bryan really is. You'd be like, hey, dude, cool beard. I like your t-shirt. He then, he'd, unless he said, like, you're fickle. Then I'd probably mark it. You never know. Um, so they demand an apology. The next week, they're going to tell you who done it. Or supposedly, so we have to wait one more week, which is pretty good. So they can let, they, they could have this go for a while. That would be fun. And that was SmackDown. Again, a, and, oh, wait, that whole match. I'm sorry. That was a surf and turf match. That was a New Day versus Randy Orton the revival. It was, it was really, it was, I'll tell you what, it was really good. I enjoyed it. I mean, so many good things in there. A step beneath the Roman Reigns match, but still, it's a surf and turf match. It's pretty good. And that was SmackDown. Again, a really fun show. They did a, they did they did a lot of wrestling in, in they, it seemed like they did a lot of wrestling in two hours. They only had the four matches, but they were fun matches though. Um, Raw's been sneaking in more matches, but they've been more shorter matches. Raw kind of keeps that is cool. Of two matches, two good fifteen 
to 20 minute matches per hour. Can't complain about that. Even though they do have the commercials, you always have the opening. There's the promos in between and stuff. So that makes sense. So that's pretty cool. So that was SmackDown. Again, no, really another good show. And I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Do not forget to catch my live stream this Friday when I do some Impact Wrestling. And then probably next week. And then Saturday, I'm off to NXT. It'll be interesting because there have been rumors. And again, only rumors that some uh, WWE main roster people will be coming back to NXT every so often. Especially when they go to um, the two-hour format on Fox Sports 1. I think it's either that, yeah, I forget if it's like FX1 or Fox Sports 1. It's something like that. So that'll be interesting to see. So I know there's um, Fandango, Tyler Breezer there. The Daytona Beach kind of gets the C squad most of the time. So that can be. Maybe Candice LeRae will show up and I'll finally get her autograph. I'm going to nerd out so hard of wanting to be funny. I just can't do anything that would get me arrested because that would be bad. So everyone have a good night, and I'll see you Friday. Bye.